Now to apply that colour I need to do two things. I'm going to click the little airbrush option up here so that the flow rate can be changed by a touch of the number keys. I'm going to start with a very low flow rate of 02. I've just hit 02 on the keyboard and now we've got an opacity set at 100% and a flow at 2%. The next thing I need to do is to enlarge the image. Now I can do that without changing the brush by just hitting control and spacebar, the zoom tool appears and I can click and drag and I've suddenly got the top part of the sky much larger and it actually shows the brush a bit better too. So now we can start to think about applying some colour to the sky. Now if you feel just a bit nervous in painting blue into the sky with a big brush like this then what you can do if you wish is to go to your layers palette and create a new blank layer over the top of the background thumbnail. We can do all of the work on that, evaluate what we've got and then if we're happy with it we can place the two together. That way we're not putting any pixels onto the basic image here. So at the bottom right we can click the little icon just to the left of the dustbin and there's the new blank layer created. So now starting with the flow rate at 2% I'm going to start applying colour to the sky. Now 2% instantly seems a little bit low so I'm going to hit 04 to increase that to 4%. And as you can see I'm just applying colour to the sky with not a great deal of finesse and you can see that the colour is lagging a little bit behind the brush. A couple of reasons for that. I'm not working with a really high powered computer here and when we use these big brushes they do take quite a bit of computer power but there we have the sky placed on the right hand side so if I hold the space bar and click and drag I can now continue along the top and I can add sky all the way along. You can see I'm not being too fussy about coming down close to the buildings in fact I'm going over a little bit and it should all come out in the wash when we actually apply the filter effect. I'm going to hit control zero to fit the image on screen and what I can do is just add a little bit of density now in places that doesn't have it and maybe just boost it a little bit right at the top. Whoops, and I've dragged my palette over to the right there, my toolbox over to the right. Now if we was having or if we had that much blue in the sky we may expect to see some in the foreground so if you want to make a couple of sweeps of your brush in the foreground it's not a great problem, we can do so. Lots of what we're doing here of course are personal things and it's not going to affect the final image greatly. So there we have the sky applied. So we need to now think about if that's what we want. A little bit more up there, a little bit more here and there. Once I'm happy with that I can amalgamate those two layers together. Now if I drag the layers out on the screen you can see we can do that from the top right here, we can go down here and choose to flatten those two layers together. So there we now have the two layers flattened and believe it or not we're ready now to start looking at what filter effect we're going to apply. Now just before we do reach for our filters the one other thing I think is quite important is for us to look at this image at the size it's going to print. Remember we set up the print size right at the start so with the zoom tool selected let's hit the print button or the print size button so we can see exactly the size we'll get on the printed paper. But now I'm going to select my filter. Now this filter is an Alien Skin Snap Art filter called Colour Pencil and as it appears on screen you'll see it's rather too large for you to see all of it. It's overspilling my recording window but what I'll do is I'll drag it down into this position so we can see enough of the image and we can see the controls. The first thing is that we're looking at the image much larger than we saw it in Photoshop. So let me select the zoom tool here hold the ALT key and I'm just going to click this once and you can see that that's probably a bit more reflective of the size we're going to use in Photoshop. So let me now move this back into position. Now these alien skin filters are pretty good. If we go to the settings you can see we've got a number of defaults here, quite a few of them. 
Now I'm going to pick up, let's look down here, I can't go through all of these, we'd be here all afternoon just looking at different effects. I'm going to go to the portrait strong edges and just off of the screen there's a little bar that will be tracking along the bottom and we would get the change appear in our image. Now the sort of change you can see there doesn't look wonderful at the moment but this is the beauty of working filters through Photoshop where we can amalgamate them with some of the tools of Photoshop to create something different. So let's assume that is going to be our starting point. If we go to the basic tab here the first thing I like to do is to create the output in a new layer above the current one which means I'm going to get my filtered version but I'm also going to leave in place an unfiltered version and that is quite important. You can also see here we have a light direction, we have options to change the pencil width, preserve edges, we've got overall pencil coverage, sketchiness, pencil pressure and even a random button. If that wasn't enough we've got colors to choose from, canvas effects to choose from and lighting. But I'm going to avoid all of those, I'm going to stay with that basic setting we applied, I'm just going to move this window a little bit to the left now and I'm going to click OK to open up the filtered version. So what we have in front of us at the moment is a fairly chunky filter effect, a little bit too heavy to produce a picture in its own right, but remember we tick that box to create a filtered version over the top of the standard version. So if we go to our layers palette, we'll find we've now got two layers. If I turn the top one off, you'll see we've got our original lying at the bottom of the filter pack. Now. Before I move on and make some adjustments here, it's probably worth saying that we can use any filter effect we choose and apply it in the way I have here. So we can use some of the other filter effects which come with Photoshop rather than third party filters such as Alien Skin Snap Art. But what I find really makes this come alive is when we reduce the opacity of the filtered layer so we get a blend of the two. Now how much we reduce the opacity from the slider at the top here is going to be personal I would say because we're going to be looking for an effect which pleases us but generally speaking I found that if we go down to around 60% somewhere around there I seem to find the blend of the two gives me a nice balance between the filtered layer and the original underneath if I just take this quickly back to its maximum again, there you can see the fully filtered version. And If I take it back down to around 60, you can see we get quite a nice effect. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to accept that. But what I also need to do is to move this forward as one solid layer. Because what I need to do next is to resharpen the image to give a bit more emphasis to the textures in the image. To do that I need to blend these two together. Now before I did that what I would probably do as well is go to File Save As and I would save this as a layered file. So I've got a folder I've created here called St Ives. There it's defaulted to a PSD document. I'm going to click Save to make sure I've got my original unfiltered layer and the filtered one in place and remember I've got the opacity set at 60% but what I can do now is to flatten those two layers together. I'm going to do it from the top of the screen I appreciate that the flatten command is just out of the bottom of the picture but what the flatten will do is to put those two layers into one because what I want to do now is to apply a bit of a extra sharpness. Now it's quite important we do look at the image at print size while we're doing this Let's go to Filter, Sharpen and Unsharp Mask. And another setting which works for me most of the time is an amount of 200% and a radius of from about 3 to 6 depending on the image. But if I turn the preview on and off you can see the effect we're getting on the image. In the small size video that you're watching you may have a little bit of difficulty seeing that. 
I'm going to increase it to 6 and that's looking much better. Once I'm happy with the sharpness I've applied to the image I'm going to click OK. Now I suppose at this stage I can hit Control 0 and we can look at the image at its entirety but when we do hit Control 0 you can see how the texture effect is beginning to be lost and it's the reason it's quite important to look at the image at print size.